And welcome to another edition of the True Patriot Podcast. Folks at home, we've got another interview here. And before we get to that, we're going to pay the bills real quick. This episode of the True Patriot Outfitters Podcast is brought to you by Amped Outdoors, brand new sponsor for us for 2023 on the fishing uh, trail out there. Amped Outdoors, LLC, lithium batteries. You want to get in the lithium game? Amped can help you do that without breaking the bank. Um, A wide range of, of quality level lithium uh, batteries, customer service galore, fast shipping. These things charge super fast overnight. We trust them. I guarantee you, you can too. Go check them out at Amped Outdoors. Without further ado, we'd like to welcome to the show, Mr. Matt Collins, the reigning 2022 Rookie of the Year with the Colorado Kayak Fishing Club. Matt, welcome to the show, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet, man. We appreciate you stopping by to the the little deal here that uh, that we try to throw out there. So you are pretty much like the model of what motivated us to get in to to doing what we do between kayak fishing and 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 recreational therapy work with warriors such as yourself. First and foremost, before we get going any further, thank you for your service, everything you and your family have done for the rest of us out here that allows us boneheads like me to go chase fish around the country. <laughs> Thanks. You bet. You bet. Uh, if folks that, that are tuning in, if you haven't realized, uh, Matt is also a, a veteran and that is why I say he is uh, he's the motivation, man. He's a kayak anger. He's a veteran straight out. Cool duty. Dude, dude's a hammer. Clearly he's, he's making waves out there. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be ton, tons of fun to watch that grow. So talk to me, man. What got you into kayak fishing? Were you a boat guy first or? or? Oh, man. So I was actually on my first deployment and uh, we were in Afghanistan. I was talking to my boss, um, Russ, and, you know, we were, we were out in Clarksville, Tennessee is, is where I was kind of living at the time. And he said, hey, man, you've got to get a hobby if you're going to get into this job and i said all right cool man what do you do and, uh he knew that i like to fish you know I, I grew up fishing with my dad not really doing a lot of bass stuff but just going out for you know crappie pan fish and crappies big. i grew up in illinois so a lot of uh, midwest fish in there and, um i had a couple uncles that had bass boats so i'd go out with them and, nice uh got into it but yeah i was i was, I was sitting in afghanistan and my buddies uh or my boss at the time was like hey man uh i've got my family set up in kayak fishing um he had a boat and he had ended up selling it and he's like let me turn you on to this dude um and it was chad hoover at the time who i actually bought my first kayak from oh wow <laughs> and this is like 10 years ago you know down in like gallatin tennessee or where, wherever he was at hook one at the time was, was his right. shop that he was he had started with but yeah i uh bought the kayak shipped it to my dad's house and then um got into it from there and then you know there's just tons of places out there to go oh big Um, time and then fast forward about uh eight years later and then um i moved down to uh alabama lower alabama uh panhandle area so i had another buddy was like hey you know, let's go fishing. And, and we did, and he had a Hobie and I, I sold my paddle or a kayak and simply <laughs> and got a pedal kayak and did a bunch of inshore fishing down there. And then, you know, we went to Eufaula, did a bunch of uh, kind of hot spots down there. And then, you know, after that I ended up moving up here, but nice. yeah, it was just kind of a, kind of a cool way to get into it, but yeah, it definitely got, you know, got hooked. You get one of those gateway friends, you know, that uh, that brings you into something. All of a sudden, it's like, uh oh, I really like this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've been fighting the wind all the time, paddling around, and I see him just over there, you know, trolling the bank like he's got a trolling motor on. And, yeah. 
I was like, that's pretty cool. So yeah, well, I was looking through your uh, through your Facebook page out there, and yeah, you've uh, you've definitely got yourself a, a heck of a fishing machine now for sure. I wanted to ask you again. I think I've seen these before through Dugout, but I wasn't sure your live scope um, uh, pole that you've got it mounted to in that that setup. Where where did you get that? What is that setup that you have? Yeah, so it is Dugout sells it. I think the company is actually out of like Naperville, Illinois. Um, I'd have to look at it. I, I get back to you on on who actually makes it, but it, yeah. it's a yeah, it's it's a basically a tripod that or not tripod, but a bipod type of mount that it that it hooks onto. But what's cool about it is that um, it has basically a little cylinder that that pole goes into, so it doesn't mm -hmm. have any flex to it. Um, some of the first issues that they had, I think Christine Fisher had it on hers. Yeah, that's it. Yep. So you can tell where it locks in there and it's got a little clip. It just yeah. keeps it locked into place. Um, some of the first issues I'd have, you know, you'd start trolling around and usually take it off when I, when I first troll, but, um, you know, it would start now, flexing back. I was going to say, does it swing up at all from that position or once it's locked down like that, you have to completely take it off to, to, does it swing forward or back at all? No, it won't swing at all. So basically there's just a, uh, kind of little uh, buckle or a tab that I yep. swing over and uh, that locks it into place. And when I want to move it right there. Uh, to take it out, yeah, I, I just pull it out and then put it next to the seat. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Yeah. I have a, uh, uh, I have a different, um, I, I can't even remember who it is that makes it, but it's like aircraft aluminum and it has the functionality to kind of swing around so I can kind of move it out of the way. But in all honesty, where it's positioned, in my new canoe unlimited, I'm, I sit pretty high. Um, yeah. the thing about the Hobies, your side rails are so much taller than is on, on, uh, on our yeah. unlimiteds. So it's for, for a big guy like me getting, you know, kind of reaching both hands over there. I'm just asking to try to, you know, take a dump out of the thing. So sure. it's like monkeying with it. And I'm, so I'm just looking for something different. I like the, the bulky nature of that one that looks, you know, it looks a little bit more rigid, a little more sturdy. So we might have to give that a whirl and see. I'm not even quite sure I want to keep the live scope. I mean, how stupid does this sound? I, so yeah. I go, I go 10 years fishing in my bass boat. I'm the only guy out there without one. And I desperately wanted one the last six years so bad, you know, cause it's like, you can complain about this gear or get your butt kicked by it. Your choice. Yeah. Yeah. Then I get in a kayak and I'm thinking, now I really need one, man, because this could really be such a game changer. I fished with it for, I don't know, three quarters of last season. And I don't know if I'm really sold on it, man. My style of fishing is a skinny water guy. And so I just don't know. I'm going to do one more season with it. But yeah, there may be a very gently used, you know, live scope going up for sale. Uh, yeah, I think, I think there's a bunch of those. And, yeah. uh, but I didn't buy mine until halfway through the season last year. And right. I definitely performed better without it. Cause I think what, what happens is, you know, you get this new technology, at least for me, it, this is, this is what I did. Got this new technology and I wanted to, to learn that so bad, you know, it's a new tool and I wanted to learn that tool. Yeah. You, you have to keep, I've gotten to the point now. I just, I have two graphs and you know, you can just use it on one or whatever, but I'll turn that graph off or just turn it on to a contour map and yeah. get back to how I was fishing before. And then when I come over, I'm trying to finally get, get into that spot where it's like, okay, now is the time to use it. You know, I think if you're out there throwing a drop shot, it's awesome. You know, I, but I've talked to several guys that are the same way. I talked to uh, Jason Duong. He's a, he's a hammer and he said the same thing. He said, yeah. he's just, just now figuring it out after a season of having it. So I think, I mean, you're right. It's, it's, if you try to approach it where, you know, so the commonplace attitude out there is it's, it's, you know, it should be illegal because it just makes things so easy. I guarantee you 98% of the people saying that have never used it. You know Absolutely. what I mean? It's like they're, they're, you know, grapes are sour type thing that are going on here. Aesop's fable. The, yeah. the reality is is that it can actually be a detriment when you're trying to, you know, if you're tournament level fishing where time is of the essence, because man, you can just get stuck at looking at dots and looking yeah. at fish 
and it could be the wrong fish for all, you know, you know, so it's, yeah, I think it, there's a lot more that goes into it. And yeah, that's why I'm, I'm saying I'm going to give it one more season myself and then we'll yeah. see, well, uh, you know, like I said, I, I have a, a way that I like to fish that I'm comfortable in. It usually ends up being a lot of skinny water and yeah, I'm like you, man, when I roll over them with the old traditional, you know, sonar at that point, that's, you know, I'll back up and run, you know, run after them then. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Well, uh, I'm not a big, pardon me, my pen dropped. I'm not a big drop shot guy. I, I, I feel more comfortable with it now, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We've got a couple tournaments this past year. And like you said, when we were, we were talking, I think it was before the show, but yeah, Colorado is so different than anywhere oh. else. And I yep. feel like the drop shot here is just, it's just one of those things. These fish move off. Cause you're talking about structure in Colorado. Yeah. It's completely different than, you know, you don't have tons of laydowns and, and anything else. So you're really looking for just, you know, what major terrain features that you have in the actual yeah. contour of the water. And I feel like a drop shot. There's a lot of guys, a lot of tournaments that we did. You know, they go over the top five and it's like, all right, we'll yeah. catch one drop shot, drop, drop shot. shot. Yep. Or, or a Ned rig or whatever. But it gets to that point, I think where you have to, but yeah, you know, cause, cause they do push off here and it's like, where, where are they? You know, it's just in the middle of nothing. So. Well, and you're from a neck of the woods, similar to where, you know, I'm from, uh, you know, where, when I started really getting serious of fishing, I was up North and and we're you know you're at down there in uh, Tennessee Alabama range the the rule of thumb is find the grass find the bass you know, yeah you get out you get out west hey y'all we ain't got no grass out here <laughs> oh. if you find grass go buy a lotter ticket <laughs> yeah because there's not a lot of it out here yeah you know, it got to the point here this last year you know I got so used to not fishing grass and the last turn that we had I think was on Boyd and it's like oh we actually have some grass there now yeah. and you know, the drought and everything else made it crazy. But I was going to yeah. say, you get such a tight window out here of when that grass is productive, you know? Yeah. For sure. For sure. So you've, uh, you were, you, you got into the kayak bass fishing there. What first led you to the Colorado kayak fishing club? Uh, how'd you learn about uh, the club and, and what, what got you here? Yeah. Um, my wife surprisingly probably should probably regret it, you know, all the time that I, <laughs> <laughs> that I've been doing this now, but uh, no, we got out here and and we're in Colorado, and you know, most of my family and friends are, are in the Midwest or Nashville area. And she's like, "Hey, just go pick up a, a new hobby. You should." And I, I'm always looking up fishing stuff. She's like, "Why don't you? Why don't you do a fishing tournament?" And I I'd never done one before actually coming out here. It's first tournament series I ever did. And, nice. Uh, she's like, yeah, go, go ahead and do it. So I signed up for it for one of them. And then, yeah, I just, just got hooked there. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's, it, you know, I've never had the privilege to, to fish an event, uh, a CKFC event, but I have fished with many of those guys that have come yeah. over and fished some of the CKB stuff. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a motor guy. That's, I don't own a Hobie. I don't have, you know, that Mirage drive. Um, yeah. I have, I have two different types of motors and then, and so that's, that's <clears throat> kind of where we stay. But at any yeah. rate, um, if, if it was anything like those guys that I, I had a chance to interview here, like Ronnie and Alex, um, and these guys, it, everybody is just so freaking inviting and, and just so friendly. I mean, from the moment one that I met these guys, it made me feel like, you know, I had known them for years. Um, and that's just the members of the CKFC are, are that way. They're just, they're very willing to share information. They're very willing to, you know, bring new people on board. And so it seems, you know, that CKFC is a great way to test out whether or not you want to, you know, you, you know, what level, or if you don't want to fish tournaments, you don't have to, you can still be a member of the CKFC and not fish any tournaments too it's a great source of information. You know, you're doing great things for good, good places that you guys, you know, take care of. So yeah, that's uh, I, I have a feeling that probably what, what sucked you in there. Now, was it a multi-species or bass that you first did? Uh, so a bunch of the weekends, which we try to line them up where they'll have a multi and a bass in the same weekend. So I went ahead and signed up for both of them. It was nice. at, uh, John Martin. I think Pueblo was supposed oh, to, it was supposed to be first uh, at Pueblo, but I think, yeah, like some random winter storm or crazy yep. winds or whatever. So 
it got bumped and Pueblo was, was an awesome day later on. But yeah, out at John Martin, um, I think the first day was bass and it was, it was tough. I think it was like hard fishing. Five people caught a fish, yeah. you know, a, a, you know, a black bass. And then the second day was multi and, and that was a lot of fun too. But I remember you're talking about Alex and Ronnie and, you know, I, I went up there and I pre-fished and I didn't know anybody. And it was the first time out there. And I come in and I see uh, Ronnie out there and he's putting his uh, kayak in too. And we just kind of, I, I asked him if he was fishing the tournament. He said, yeah. He said, I'm actually going to fish uh, down here for crappie a little bit if you want. And I think it was like three or four of us. We stayed down there by the launch and we hammered crappie for like, <laughs> <laughs> like an hour and a half just non-stop it, the the bite was just perfect and nice. you know you talk about inviting alex and ronnie i can't say enough about those guys They're, yeah i mean talking to them there's there's no you know and the thing about the club is that you know it's a non-profit so yeah there's a there's a payout and that's that's awesome but you know i'm i'm not looking to make a lot of money right. doing this you know personally so so for me, it's like, hey, it's a great cause, you know. We gave like seventy five hundred bucks to the Boys and Girls Club last year, and it's it's something where it's like, hey, I I get to go out, go fish with some buddies, and have a little competition out there, and then you know, at the end of the day, we're doing some good stuff, like you said. So yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Very very cool. Now, real quick here, I just want to take a, a quick. Are you hearing any feedback in your headset whatsoever when you're talking? Uh, I'm not. Okay. I'm getting some feedback every time you talk here. Folks, hang with us. We're gonna we're gonna try to get something fixed here and we'll be right back with you. And we are back. Thanks, folks, for your patience with our little technical difficulties there. So, so yeah, we're talking about the club. We're talking about. So, before we get going too much further, talk to us if you don't mind as much as you're comfortable with uh, talking with us. Talk to us about your service, man. Uh, what uh, what branch you serve in? Where uh, uh, you know where where you're deployed, and what brought you to Colorado eventually? Right on. Yeah, I joined. Uh, let's see, almost 13 years ago now. Um, wow. Yes. Uh, I joined, I had the opportunity. I, I've been in, I'm in the army. I've been in the army, uh, that, that entire time, but, uh, I had the opportunity to go in with a contract for, uh, it's called 18 X-ray or a special forces candidate. Uh, so I did that. So I was basically straight in. Um, I did go to college before and, and worked a little bit. I was 26 when I came in, but wow. Yeah. I, I came in, I did basic training, Airborne school and then kicked over to Fort Bragg and I uh, was there for, oh man, probably a year and a half to, to two years. The pipeline's uh, pretty long. But then, yeah, I was at Green Beret at uh, the Special Forces Group in uh, Fort Campbell. Nice. And, yeah, so their area of responsibility is uh, CENTCOM with the Middle East, so all the good places. <laughs> so, yeah, so we did, Af let's see, Afghanistan, Syria, Turkey, Iraq, Lebanon, Jordan. I think that's most, uh, yeah. That's, that's pretty much the 31 flavors right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of, yeah, the fun thing is they all have, you know, well, some of those places don't speak Arabic, but right. that's one of the things is, each special forces group is aligned with a language. So uh, pretty much a fifth group, everybody speaks Arabic and wow. you have different dialects in every country in the Middle East though. So it's hard, super hard to keep up with that. I bet. Um, but, I bet. but yeah, I did that for 10 years and uh, I loved it, but I had kind of drive to do something new and nudge to do something new. And um aviation was was the next thing i got into so i put a flight school packet in and got accepted into that and now i fly uh helicopters so i've been doing that for a few years and that's what brought us out to to colorado so if you ever see uh the the big chinook helicopter flying over uh one of the I, lakes one of the lakes here at it might be up me up there yeah you fly the the shit hooks yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. That what you fly? Nice. Yeah. yeah. Big bus driver. 
Oh, that thing is a yeah. monster. Actually, I've seen, yeah. uh, we've seen it pass over uh, from uh, a couple of them pass over from Broomfield here. I, I just assumed they were coming out of Wyoming, uh, yeah. you know, coming down. But yeah, I've, I, and I remember telling my, uh, my buddy, I was like, you know, you do not see a Chinook very often, man. Those things, especially out here, usually they've got like a tank or a house underneath them that they're hauling <laughs> around. <laughs> yeah, you can hear them from forever away. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. That is that is super super cool and and I told you this before tell you it again thank you so very much Matt for for just everything that's you've it was the it was the motivation that that you know sprung actually an army uh, 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 gentleman Bradley commander um, at uh, the very first event that I ever had the opportunity to go work um, I'm not a veteran myself. I'm a former first responder uh, with the Larimer County Dive Rescue Team. I did did a little bit of you know work there. Um, had a absolute some of the best times of my memories of my of my uh, uh, volunteer work. And I got a chance to go with the Warrior Bonfire Program to Vienna, Missouri. Um, I brought my boat down there, all my fishing gear, and I had the honor to spend three four days with these uh, uh, true. Uh, true, just uh, real life warriors. And these are all combat uh, Purple Heart recipient uh, gentlemen that were there from uh, many different branches. And at the end of it, we're at the bonfire and everybody's kind of giving their thanks, you know, the night before we're all going to leave. And and uh, the the homeowner that owns the the land that donated everything, you know, the 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 time to us to use the private lake and the private lodge and such. He and I are kind of sitting next to each other back and just letting these guys, you know, have their time together. And Michael stands up, older older guy from Louisiana, um, and he says, "You know, you may not be veterans." And he's looking at the two of us. He says, "But you are the type of citizens that are worth fighting for." And he said, "Thank you for being true patriots." And it hit me so hard next to being, you know, the titles I've been given in my life, you know, have the number best one was always dad. I mean, that was the best one. Yeah. The second one was coach. You know, I coached for 18 years, but I'll tell you what, when this, when this gentleman here labeled me as a true Patriot, it, it coach now is three true Patriot, you know, stepped right in, right in line there. And it's what sprung the name of this, of our, of our organization, man. It's, it's, we changed everything. It was just, you know, for us, and it's because of, of guys like you, man, that, uh, that, you know, motivates us to get out there. Um, dude, a chopper pilot. I can't get that out of my head. That is, I mean, yeah. those are the strangest things on the planet to try to fly. There's so much going on <laughs> there. And you guys don't have the automatic buttons. Like a lot of these <laughs> planes do, do you like, you know, the land for you and everything, or uh, you'd be surprised how much they do now, but really? yeah, like back in Vietnam, like what those guys were doing, that's, it's incredible. There's, they, you know, sometimes they, you know, they, they'll talk about aerodynamics or me the mechanical features in it, and, and some of it they just say is, is PFM or pure freaking magic, <laughs> and uh, it truly is. Yeah, the, the oh, fact yeah. that that thing doesn't, you know, just fall apart in the sky is pretty, pretty incredible. Well, and where they, I mean, like, like you were talking about not the Nam era. I mean, just hearing stories, having the the privilege to hear some of these stories, and 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 see where they were taking some of these Blackhawks, man. Um, yeah. And especially back in those days, you know, the, the engine power has changed quite a bit, you know, with those, you know, over the years with the Hawk, but yeah. I mean, some of those med, you know, those, uh, those uh, medical, you know, retrieves that they were where they had to dump these things in and just, they had seconds to get down, yeah. get the hell out of there. And their shrapnels peeling up through the belly of this thing. I mean, it's just, it's yeah. insane. Yeah. Yeah, one of the uh, one of the guys that told me he, his his uh, it wasn't his call sign, but his buddies nicknamed him Magnet Ass. He was a pilot, and then he had so much shrapnel taken out of his backside and his back from you know things blowing up underneath him and stuff coming up through the bottom of the thing. Sure. And it's like, oh my goodness, yeah, that's uh, that's not the nickname you want to get. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> you know, and one of the things for us with the True Patriot Outfitters is we provide the kayak fishing experience. And we do this under the umbrella, you know, the auspices of recreational therapy. There's uh, there's some, the brothers and sisters out there that are working their way through PTS, anxiety, depression, just trying to assimilate back into, you know, civilian life. Yeah. Um, 
we take, you know, 12 weeks to recruit you and then, you know, three days to decruit, you know, pretty much is what they end up doing a lot of times. So without a really strong support system, that can be a super big challenge. And so we try to provide that because in, in tell me if, if where I'm going with this is tell me, I mean, just your experience from it. I never realized what it was, but now I understand the, the focus, the calming, the, um, the overall sense of, and I don't want to say just peace, but just things coming together and making sense when I'm out on the water, yeah. there's not so much chaos anymore. And it, it could be cause I'm focused on trying to catch that little, you know, silly little green or brown fish out there, but I make some of my best decisions in life when I'm out in that kayak, when I'm on the water. I mean, do you find that same piece out there? That same, that same focus that, that comes with, with fishing? Yeah, a hundred percent. It it extends even farther. I feel like some of the drives that I have out to these places to go oh. fish, you know, like we're going, you know, I've, I've got like a couple hour, two, three hour drive to some of these places. And, you know, you, normally I'm driving around here, and, you know, Colorado is, you know, our insurance rates are high, are high for a reason out here. <laughs> but yeah, if I'm going fishing, I, I just, I'm at peace, man. And, it, yeah. and it's, and it's awesome. Um, yeah it's really cool you guys are doing that it's it's something that and you mentioned it before i think uh, as you were saying you know you had a group of guys together i feel like when you get um you know if you can get a one-on-one -on -one time with a guy that that's probably yeah. awesome but if you can get a group of guys together that has that yeah. share that shared bond you know there's there's going to be things that click that are um that are life-changing for them you know and for for us, one of the factors that we we realized that less is more. Okay, it was one of the reasons why we we kind of broke ties from a from another group that was you know focused on doing like ten at a time. I, I felt that was yeah. that was too many people going on at one moment. And uh, uh, Staff Sergeant retired Staff Sergeant Justin Patterson, U.S. Army, um, was one of those uh, combat veterans that was there at uh, at. Vienna, Missouri. He told me, he says, you don't have to be a veteran. He's like, don't be a bucket. That's your main thing. You be that conduit. And he, he gave me that full yeah. piece there. And what I realized was some of the best work I can do is if I can take out a pair of guys that have had, or, or gals that have had similar experiences, my job is to simply connect you guys together. That's what I'm there for. If I can connect and then I'll be the comic relief. I mean, I, I tell people when you go out, you're either going to laugh with me or at me. I promise you that one way or another, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely have that in there. But yeah, when we can connect uh, folks, it's just, just reminding them that, Hey man, you're not alone. There's a lot of, a lot of you guys out there. And there are people like me that are, that are extremely grateful for, for what you have done and what you, you know, you guys, the one thing about you veterans that I will say this, this, that, that is a common denominator, trying to get you guys to accept, to go out on a fishing trip. It's, it's like, they feel like they haven't earned it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You more than paid for this dude. It just hasn't yeah. been delivered yet. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we find that a lot. I have to chase you guys down out there, boss, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to try to, you know, here, hold the paddle. Let's go. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> But no, that's uh, that is the the piece that we try to connect two to three at a time and uh, and have that. That's why we have you know the number of kayaks that we have. It's you know we have four. We're going to probably take it down to three, um, just to really focus on that, and then we'll slowly build it. What works better though is when we get volunteers to come with us too. Yeah, you know that can help with that. So we have you know four or five kayaks running around out there. Then we can get little competitions in there, man. Then we yeah, can. Have, then we start having some good fun with that. <laughs> Just give me a call, man. I'll come on out. We'll, we'll Would love there. it. We definitely have to go fishing for sure. There's, yeah. there's no doubt about it. Yeah, you know, uh, something you were saying there is is so true that you know you get these guys out there and maybe they don't open up, but you know it's that linkage to somebody else. But yeah, maybe they do. And you know, I over the past you know however many years that that I've been in the military, I've seen the type of person that probably needs that help is there, there are some people that reach out for it. And there's a lot of services out there now and organizations like what you guys are doing in different capacities, you know, different yep. hobbies or whatever that, that really reach those guys. And, and it's great. But a lot of people that need that help, they don't want to 
seek out and you know they're in a bad spot and there's a pride issue with that too yep. you know the um the first funeral that i actually did a funeral detail for was a suicide and that was a green beret that he had gotten out medically and the solution to you know for what he had going on was a lot of pills and <clears throat> he yeah. was trying to do everything i mean he was he had talked the day he died he, he ended up that morning he talked to his pastor and it, it was more of a counseling session they had that you know that that relationship but you know a lot of guys or girls that have you know these uh these demons that they're fighting they're not going to want to go out and sign up you know let, no. let me go hop on a website and sign up for this charity organization right they're in a dark place you know and um yeah I'm, I'm learning that quite a bit you know we've um i had a situation last year where a young man uh that i had met through some referrals because we keep our network open of working with many nonprofits. um we work with the Allegiance Ranch, Warrior Bonfire, Operation Equine, Socks and Cookies. You know, we, we try to stay broad there and had a situation where a gentleman connected with uh, one of the others um, had reached out to them. They reached out to me because he was kind of in our neck of the woods here. Colorado Springs was actually his destination. And um, they passed, you know, his information on to me. And then I ended up making contact with him. And we had a situation where this young man was opening up to me in the form of text, you know, and saying some really dark things. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm reaching on the backside as I'm talking, keeping him talking and keeping him texting with me. I'm scrambling over here, talk, calling everybody I can going, Hey man, I tie knots for a living. Okay. I'm not a counselor here. I, you know, yeah. I'm going to keep this young man talking and I'm going to, you know, try to approach this. Thankfully, Brian Romans, our founder um, has a, 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 ample amount of experience to really kind of, you know, work through some of this stuff. And so he, he kind of guided me through the ways to chat with this guy. And uh, we did eventually get him connected with the right connections and got him some help. And now it looks like about three months later now, it looks like this young man is uh, he's uh, after some, some good solid uh, uh, work, looks like he's on the right path, man. And so we're, some of the, you know, that it's so weird, like you said, where, where this help can come from. And it's for us, we always tell people it's kayak fishing might be our main medium, but the point is, is once we, once we connect with somebody, we're connected with them and we will give them every bit of resource we have, you know, and that's, that's our commitment. And if we have to do it one at a time, we'll do it one at a time. That's the, yeah. that's the way we'll get through this. Um, and so, yeah, it's, and like you said, it's, they won't come to you. You got to, you got to be tactful on how you keep coming after them, <laughs> you know, and yeah. when, when they realize that they're doing me the favor, come on, man, I need somebody to take with me, <laughs> you know, do me a favor, yeah. and come, you know, let's go fishing, you know, let's do this, you know, otherwise I'm just a dope sitting back here at my pickup. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. I go fishing alone all the time. That ain't no, <laughs> I don't need to need to do that anymore. <laughs> Well, awesome, man. Yeah, that's uh, it's a it's a huge portion of, of what's out there. You know, on the on the straight competitive fishing side, um, you uh, you got in and you certainly, man. I've been I was watching the comments out there of guys that have fished with you and around you. You've made some serious waves out there, and there's some guys calling calling you out, going, "Okay, this may be in his rookie year, but yeah, from now on, we're on notice because you you yeah. moved." I don't think maybe they realized where you came from and the history that you had that sure. just got to, just got to figure out Colorado fishing is like, you know, it's, <laughs> when, it's a different bird. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, you know, fishing this, this, this past season, it was, it was just so much fun. It was just, a, it was like a giant learning experience. Every lake I went to was a new lake for the tournament. Yep. So I tried to get up there, you know, as, as soon as I could after, you know, with work schedule to get up there and pre-fish and then, now you're meeting these guys and and gals just having a blast out there. So it was a great season. It was fun. Hopefully next year we'll, we'll get some more, we'll get some more success. So, well, you know, and that's, you know, you keep your head down. You, it's, you, you learn fast. I've been doing competitive fishing for a lot of years and you, and what you, what you eventually pick up on is you're, you're technically not even fishing against anybody else, but yourself. Yeah. That's really what it is. Learn to work with the fish, not against them, and you're fishing yourself. Um, 
you can't control what that other guy's going to do. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's, it's mainly on, on your lap to, 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 and as long as you're just having fun with it, man, the moment I've always said this, the moment that it's no longer fun, we'll, we'll stick local and I'll stop traveling all over the country, you know, running these things down. But I, I love the grind. That's the problem. Yeah. I don't, you know, I hate the long drives. I will say that the older I get the, that 18 hour drive to Pickwick in Tennessee yeah. there. Oh, I loved Pickwick when I was there. It kicked yeah. my butt, but I loved it. But yeah, getting there. Ooh. Yeah. We're, uh, that's where our sponsors are coming in. If they can help us that way, we can actually maybe drive for 10 hours, stay at a motel, wake that's up awesome. and drive for another eight, you know, the next day. <laughs> that's a little bit easier. Yeah. That, sure. That's a brutal drive. I did it, uh, yesterday and yeah we oh, you, to, you just got we back went, yesterday yeah so we left uh north nashville area and yep. yeah i think it was like 15 hours or something yeah yeah well and especially oh, yeah. when when you get oh i'd say just a hair west of kansas city good <sighs> night <laughs> you you want to hit that at night man i'm telling you right now <laughs> That's the yep. best time to get through that is when it's dark. <laughs> yeah. And there's not a whole lot in Kansas. No, no, some good fishing out there. I will say that though. There is yeah. some good, yeah. good bass fishing out there, but, uh, so rookie of the year, 2022, um, you got your setup. You're a, you are a Hobie guy through and through. Um, and on top of that, uh, was it just this year also that you were elected onto the CKFC board as the secretary? Is that, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, they had uh, their board change over at the end of the year. That's after right. Volunteers and yeah, so happy to help. So that's awesome, man. You know, and we, we talked about it before the CKFC here in Colorado. We are so fortunate <laughs> to have the two clubs that we have. The big club is yeah. the CKFC. Definitely more uh, more inviting for information and, and folks wanting to explore kayak fishing. And then if if you want to play uh, some tournament uh, fishing there, this is the place where you go, man, to get started because it's it'll teach you the ropes in and out. You're going to have a wide range of competitors from very new to you know some of the best hooks in the West. You know are fishing that. Um, the CKB side of things over here, uh, follows the bass set of rules, pretty much everybody getting in there. I mean, there's, there's that thought we know why we're there is a shot for the classic, right? I mean, yeah. are arguably one of the biggest stages in our sport, you know, right there. And so you do tend to get, you know, a, uh, a lot of the, um, uh, I just want to say more experienced ang you know, tournament anglers, yeah. guys that are willing to travel and such <laughs> and gals, our state champion, Leslie Ali. She, uh, she went out there. Our angler of the year, though, I, you know, when the one big difference it was following bass rules, we allow motors over there. But I always try to point this back out. Keep in mind, our angler of the year was out of a Hobie with no motor. Okay, Trev Stuckey. I mean, Trev yeah. he, he, and Jason, who was, I think, in second place, no motor. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like just Those, because we allow them doesn't mean it's in Colorado, dude. It's not that big yeah. of an advantage. You know, there's some there's some things that are with a motor, but. It's, yeah, it, it's not a, a, a scale tilter in, in not in Colorado, at least for sure. I, I was driving back, you know, in Tennessee and Midwest and, you know, those places out there. I was, I've been looking at Truman because we're going out there. And I'm putting a motor on my Hobie in, next month and yeah, for that tournament, yeah. you know, because, you know, it's these river systems that are just huge. And, you know, sure. out here it's, it's not too big of a deal. But yeah, uh, Trevor and Jason are or hammers. Yeah. So, These yeah. guys are hooks. <laughs> yeah. And I I've had uh, the pleasure of fishing uh, with them against them and then talking with them afterwards many a times. And it's, it's, we're, we're very fortunate out here, man, in Colorado to have these clubs and have the people that we have. I have, I've yet to meet, uh, you know, a tool to be honest with you, just to be yeah. not, not politically correct. I've never met uh, a, just a straight, you know, tool that's fishing out of a kayak out here yet. And I, I, lost count of the amount of, you know, boneheads I ran into in the boat world when I was out there of guys, you know, just, just different things that, uh, that I was dealing with. So I've, I've been very appreciative of that. Yeah. Did you ever get a chance to fish out of your yak out, uh, out East? Uh, or has that so been primarily here? My, my Hobie is, has pretty much been here and just here. Alabama and, uh, a lot of inshore fishing actually 
tons nice. of redfish and, and all that. So nice. Good stuff. And has it always been bass for you? Um, I kind of enjoy the multi. I I don't know. I'm really 50-50 on it. And I might even branch right. out and, and do some CKB tournaments next year. I, I don't know. I haven't looked at the schedule enough to, to see what I can fit in. But yep. um, the multi is cool just because it's another dimension of, okay, now my I still have the same amount of time in the day, but now I've got to compartmentalize it to uh, you know to really be effective on three you know two or three different species out there. It's it's fun. I mean, to go out to like you know to you're just not going to get that experience in a lot of places in the country. Uh, no, that's where I think Colorado really excels. Is you know you go out to like eleven mile spinny some of these. Uh, reservoirs up there and it's like you got dudes pulling in you know the last 10 minutes of the tournament jeremy pulled in like a 46 inch pike or something it's insane it was insane he's he's so screaming over there i get over there and take a picture of him and everything and uh it, it's awesome but you know you, you get you get multiple people that have you know 30 plus inch pike in a tournament and then the trout are insane so it is pretty fun. I, and it's a trolling game out there too. So that's, that's kind of a different aspect too, is, is that now you're, you know, you got two lines out trolling versus, you know, bass, you know, it's one line in the water, you know, standard rules. I don't know how you guys do that. Cause I, I'm going to tell you right now, one of the things that, that, that turned me off on the pedaling side was, all the stuff going on. So when I, when I pedal in my, in my uh, kayak, I have to go back to hand steering, right? I have to, yeah. I have to control with my hand on how I steer in my setup. I literally steer with my one foot, just like I used to in my bass boat. I can, I can control left and right, whether I'm running my stern drive motor or my bow mount, I can, I can do foot yeah. steering with one foot. So my hands are on the, you know, are fishing. When I go back to the pedal, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the pedal. I'm hand steering. I got the pole. I've got trying to get an anchor. I got a net. I can't begin to imagine having two lines out and, and paddling or pedaling and trying to manage all that. You guys are insane, man. That is amazing how you, how you guys can manage that. It can be a mess. It can turn into a mess real quick. And, you know, one step even further, you know, Brett, is he, he's a hammer in the club too but he'll be out there on his hobby and he'll have a fly rod yard and i would i'd just be tangled up you know yeah <laughs> there's no way no. So, on a good yeah. day from shore i'm pretty sure there's a, a court order that keeps a fly rod out of my hands for public <laughs> safety reasons for sure right. same yeah. yeah so and we're gonna take a i'm starting to get that feedback again this is so okay. weird yeah i don't know let me uh, try to switch it over. Okay. Uh, right I'm going to keep it recording and I can, I can edit this stuff later. I can okay. pull it out. I just, I've never had that happen. Weird. Let me know if I got any better oh, there. Yeah. Whatever that is. Okay. Okay. I've got a, uh, an audio interface. I'm switching between that back to the internal audio and it seems. Okay. Like back, so. Cool. All yeah. right. So, we, so we'll keep going here. All right. So, yeah, I mean, that, when when you guys, I've seen some of the pictures Brett puts up there, man. He is he is a hammer. And uh, when you yeah. guys are in trolling with that with your pedal drive systems, that is that is pretty pretty impressive through and through. Um, so your uh, your experience here in Colorado, the last last little bit I wanted to touch on this. When last year was really my first year fishing the state of Colorado. It was my rookie season in a kayak. Point. Point in fact, the first tournament I ever fished out of a kayak was the Tr Lake Truman Open for the All American Kayak Series, that <laughs> professional series. That was the first time I'd ever been in one for a tournament. I had gone around to some local lakes and got comfortable in it and figured, all right, we'll see what this does. And off we went. You know, my bass yeah. boat stayed in the garage and, you know, and off we went. And I got a, a, a master class given to me on going around to Colorado and visiting all these different fisheries. I know what my favorite fishery is that I've hit so far in this state. And I didn't do particularly well because last year I used the CKB as kind of my home run swing. 
I was okay to strike out on the local side because I knew that I have very limited resources this first year. So I'm going to put all of that into the all American to really, you know, cause that's where the, you know, bigger money was and that's what, kind yeah. of, and I was like, and then I'll try some really risky stuff here back home with, you know, the local stuff and we'll see, we'll, we'll hear over zero and uh, we'll see how it goes. But I didn't have great results at it, but I can tell this is going to be the, the fishery that I enjoy the most. Which, what was your, for bass specifically, what All was right. your favorite lake that you went to? All right. For bass specific. Not based on results, just how you felt when you, when you saw the place. So I think that when you get up to like the Loveland area, there's a ton of potential up there. Like Scott Brands hammers it up on Boyd and <laughs> I have not got that bite there. I was, yeah, you know, I was throwing a spook junior up there and just struggling for bites. Dude, That's between, the only thing I get them on. Between you and me, there's like <clears> six <throat> places to fish on that lake. I like Boyd. It's beautiful, but yeah, I'm yeah. not a, there's, yeah, if there's more than 10, 10 kayaks out there, you're going to be struggling to find the spot because chances are these other guys are on it already. <laughs> yeah. I, I fished Pueblo the most and, and, it was the most productive day. Everybody limited out there. I felt like that day, but I feel like Trinidad is probably my favorite bass lake because it's a smaller Pueblo. Basically it's, it's like you took Pueblo and you put it a little bit smaller, it's perfect size for kayaks. You don't have a ton of like, you know, big jet skis out there. There, there are some, yeah. and, but they're pretty, they're pretty, people are pretty respectful out there. Yeah. So yeah. What's yours? Pueblo. Yeah. Well, it just the way that that place sets up, and for a, for a Colorado lake to me, the I, it made sense. Things made sense there to me when I was looking at it, and yeah. I I went all in on the North Shore, which I shouldn't have. Clearly, um, Caleb uh, was right behind me, and neither one, both of us drove the struggle bus up there. Um, we got a few fish, but just tons and tons of small fish. Yeah. All the quality seemed to come from the South Shore, you know. So we we guessed wrong. I, I knew though, I, I felt pretty good because it's like, you know, you know, Caleb, he's been around here. The, the dude's a hammer. Yeah. And so we head out and I pick up sound, you know, of another kayak. And so I turn around, look, what's Caleb? And he's behind me, you know, so as we're leaving the bay going, I'm like, okay, I'm feeling a little better about my decision. Cause I'm going where Caleb was going. Yeah. <laughs> so I tried to kind of position myself, you know, way, uh, you know, give us, I, I, I kept moving until I saw him stop okay. and it's like, okay, he's going to fish there. So I'll get way down here that way. I'm not running over stuff for him and he'll have plenty of room. And if we want to swap, we can swap. But yeah, I think both of us ended up just, you know, I would let him come fish right next to me to be honest with you. Cause it's like, dude, if you can find him in here, I, cause all I'm catching are the 13s all day long, you know, and, or no, I'm sorry, 11s. Cause yeah. 12, 12 was needed to count, you know, and I just couldn't, we just couldn't find them, but I could yeah. just tell by the way that place set up, it was, it was beautiful. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the, the lake itself. I'm excited to go back there early, early spring this year for us. You gotta take a drop shot. <laughs> that's yeah. I did not fish a drop shot once when I was there. So yeah, apparently that's what I need that I, I will throw the net <clears throat> Um, I'll throw, I, I have different variations of the Ned that I, that I play around with. I use that up in Minnesota actually quite a bit. Yeah. Um, a buddy of mine showed me a cool technique of how to, how to skim the top edges of weeds with that Ned. It's cool. actually, you're moving that thing the whole time and you're kind of ripping it through the weeds. It just triggers shots. There's yeah. just no weeds out here to trigger it through. <laughs> I've, had, I've had some luck with, uh, like a good, net, like a real solid Ned bite early spring like right when it right when that water temp hit 50 degrees i mean yep. it was it was textbook they just they were super shallow and uh on the north side yep. but yeah I, I i didn't even get to pre-fish pueblo I, I had a lot of work stuff going on that week i think i went out there maybe two weeks before and i was on the north and they were biting i was like i don't know what i'm gonna do i go south looked at some graphs and and went across and yeah that was probably the most productive day of fishing that i nice. that i had that year and uh, if i would have measured my fish correctly because it was my rookie year i, I would have <laughs> would have got a, a better finish there but it was still good yeah so did you i mean did you pretty much do the checklist of all the rookie mistakes because i did um i i mean with tourney x with my kayak with prep 
I mean, I, yeah. I was on the fast track of just mistake after mistake after mistake that I was making and just thankfully didn't repeat them, you know, learn them and move on to the next one. Well, I didn't realize, you know, this first tournament I'd done it at all. So I didn't even realize, you know, how close they would be. So I'd measure my fish. And I'd be like, all right. Yeah. It might hit that next quarter inch line. Yeah, uh, whatever. We'll just, we'll just take a picture and submit it. <laughs> and I learned right after Pueblo that like every quarter inch matters at, oh. at these things. They're so close. And then I had one where I don't know if it was a mouth open thing or, yeah. It, it was yeah pretty much all the rookie mistakes there you know yep. i've had so. i had i had a fish dq'd on, a, on an open mouth um yeah. i took third place at the all-american at lewis and clark made nice. a run i had a if i would have called that last 15 or i would have had a shot at winning this thing because i was literally a quarter inch out of second place and that would have been probably about six seven hundred dollar difference in the size of check that we pulled you know and i'm like are you kidding me i wonder if I would have, you know, maybe pinched the tail before the picture, you know, type thing, whatever, because you're allowed to do that. You can pinch yeah. it. You just can't be pinching it in the picture. You know, you have yeah. to hands off, you know, type thing. And I'm like, oh, could I have done that? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I think it was Alex. Alex or Ronnie or probably both of them were like, dude, after Pueblo, they're like, dude, you, what did you do? Like, <laughs> clearly, you had like, you had an extra half inch at least. <laughs> you know, and, and it was a difference from like fifth to third. So, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. But, so but I had, fun. so there's multiple ways in Tourney X to take a photo, right? And submit your fish. Yeah. The way I used to do it, because I, I don't, I don't sandbag. Okay. For me personally, I just, I don't want that stuff lingering that I, oh, I got to go back and do this. Same. I catch it. I picture away it goes, but I was doing it from inside the app. And when you do it from inside the app, you take the picture, the picture comes up and it gives you two choices, okay or retake. Here's a point. Here's something I learned is that a droplet of water that lands on your phone apparently has the same contact that a finger does. Oh, no. Because I get this guy, he's about a 17 and a half inch uh, largey at Wilson. I'm at Wilson. <laughs> this would have been fish number five on day one. I get him. I'm smiling ear to ear because it was a beautiful strike. You know, hit it on a buzz bait. Back in the water he goes. Water comes up, hits my phone, and I turn to see it. Bloop, and the picture goes away. It never, I didn't hit okay. Didn't submit it over. And I'm like, no. <laughs> so we ended with four fish for the day because, yeah, I just, I couldn't recoup from that. It, it spun me out in my head. Like, how stupid can I be? You know, it's like, this yeah. is, this is, you know, so yeah, now we have a little bit better routine where, um, I actually just take the pictures with the camera itself, their, their location tagged, and then I'll go submit the fish through my gallery right yeah. after I know the picture's good. I got everything set fish is in, you know, still in my net off the side. I got my system down now. Yeah. They're, they're literally out of the water. Very, you know, very few, maybe 30, 45 seconds, then they're back in the net in the water and they're good. And then we'll, we'll get them out. But yeah, dude, just uh, silly things like that all year long. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Pueblo was probably good for me because it, it brought a lot of stuff up that I needed uh, to fix and yeah. have too many issues. I, I had some issues at Trinidad, my, uh, my 360 drive decided to crap out on me. In the oh, middle. No. The, I had just got it replaced too. And oh. so I was on my third one, I think. At the time. <laughs> and uh, I know some other guys and I'll, I'll say like, you know, they've always sent me a replacement right away. So I can't yep. complain as far as the support goes, but there is definitely a concern of just having one of them. Um, and then the warranty, you know, expires this summer, so that's going to be interesting. But yeah, I was out at I was out in a brand new drive. Um, I think it was the second time I took it out. I was drop shotting in like twenty five feet of water, and half the drive just fell off, and I was <laughs> stuck out there. So, and I was crushing it. I mean, I think I was in like third place. I had a limit at like eight a.m. 
Wow. It was, it was like, this is the day. And I dropped to eighth and yeah, it was, it was, that, it was not fun. And do, I mean, tell you, uh, it leaves a scar, man. It's hard to come back from that. I, you're not yeah. the only guy that's, that's, you know, clearly I know you've obviously looked online. You're not the only guy that's had, you know, issues with that 360. Oh, yeah. Trev uh, was telling me quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Jordan Wellerman, he's a Hobie guy from the on the pro side, um, and yeah, there was uh, there was some of you guys out there that were really struggling with that, and and that's the thing I don't think maybe Hobie fully one hundred percent has grasped is that you got to get that trust back, dude. You know how how much that bites and hurts for a tournament angler if they don't trust or if they're worried about their gear. Ooh, no, you know, that's just, it doesn't work. Yeah. I've, I've gotten rid of probably perfectly good stuff because I just, you know what? No, if I'm not going to trust it, I'm going to be second guessing it out there. And that's just not going to work for me. You know? Yeah. And I mean, I'll be real honest. There's a lot of guys that fish, you know, other kayaks and natives or new canoes yeah. or whatever. And, you know, see a lot of those issues that I no, see out there. Right. So. Yeah. Well, and we've, we've always said it. Uh, we all know it. I mean, Hobie has the best pedal drive system on the market. There's just no, no one's going to try to compete. Right. I can tell you I'm on team new canoe now. So I'm privy to those conversations <laughs> and I can tell you no one is behind the scenes at new canoe saying we're going to try to go out and compete with the pedal drive system. That's right. not our game. We, you know, I think in, you know, we don't have to say it to all of us understand it, know it. What we feel, you know, our strength is what we know our strength is, is when it comes to the motorized, you know, side, we don't yep. believe anybody can, can match the versatility of what new canoe brings with a, with a propulsion system put on, you know, we're, we're, we're very confident there because there's enough of us out there doing it, but yeah, it's, it's still, um, I mean, I've had my, I've been motored. I was at the Missouri river side by side with a guy in a Hobie and he pulled away from me. I got a motor and he's going against current. I'm going against current and his hobby, he starts just pedaling away on thing. And mind you, he's the size of a jockey, right? He's a little, you know, yeah. smaller dude, cardio for days. And boom, he starts pulling away from me. And I'm just like, are you, I am at max power right now. <laughs> I can't even yeah. keep up with this dude, man. But yeah, it's no good if it blows out on you. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. We had a tournament at, um, I think it was horse two <laughs> and everybody's launched it in the same spot. And it was basically just a shotgun launch. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. But I remember Jim Malcolm was up there, a couple other guys in Hobies. And I, even the difference between like a, a I have a 12, um, he has a 14. The 14s even go a little bit faster than the 12. I'm trying to keep up with those guys. And they're just hauling. And you look back and everybody's just behind you. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think the way that, you know, the way that I'm really excited to see kind of like the next few years of, of kayak fishing. I, and there's yeah. been a lot of like rule changes and, and stuff going on. I hope we can keep the spirit of the sport of, hey, kayaks can take you places yep. that a boat can't. And I hope we keep some of that. But I do feel like, hey, if you got a motor on your boat and you can paddle and get into some cool places in addition to that, I'm real excited to get my motor and, and yeah. see what I'm going to do with it just personally on, on that level. Cause I mean, like you're saying out here in Colorado, these lakes are small enough where it's, it's not a big deal, no. but when you're talking about hopping spots, I covered, I think 18 miles last year on uh, one of the tournament days. I think it was wow. at spinny. Um, and a lot of this, cause I was new to these places. I, I don't know, you know, the spot. So I, and I'm, I'm trolling. I was a multi-species day. Right. But I go over 18 miles. My back's killing me. You know, I got kayak cushions. That's going to help a little bit more. But um, I'm excited to have a motor to hop from spot to spot and then get in there, you know. So well, we'll it helps see what you narrow. For me, what I, what I realized quickly was the safety aspect of it. Yeah. Um, I appreciate the fact that when the wind is going nuts and some rollers start going with my motors, I can quickly adjust to that and I can then let the motor hold me safely while I get things under control. And then I make sure that I'm, you know, safely getting to shore or I'm moving, you know, these it's it for me, it was the safety aspect. The second piece of it was, is that, um, you know, it's where the industry's going, man. Torquedo, 
and now Newport's in the 36 volt game. What they just released is by, uh, I'll tell you what, if I had a wish list that's on it, that NK 300, man, they're offering one hell of a motor for a really reasonable price, 1200 bucks for a 36 volt. I mean, that's going to be, and I've got the 24 volt NK 180. Okay. I'll tell you that little thing is a beast. She's, she's 60 uh, thrust pounds, man. And that thing, it scoots my chunky butt all over the water in a hurry. Yeah, they're, yeah, it's uh, it allows you to to see a little bit more, but there are times where you just you pull it up and lock it. And yeah, you can paddle in. Yeah, our our home waters where we host a bunch of stuff with the outfitters is at Stanley Lake, and there's a third of that lake that is no motorization allowed. It's pedal or paddle only. So I'll go right up to the buoys, pull the motor up, lock yeah. it in place so it's out of the water, and then I'll paddle my way right on in there, <laughs> yeah. you know, and go play around in the weeds in there, you know, for a while. So it's you can do it for sure. There's there's ways yeah. to it. But who knows? We'll see. Well, like you said, the spirit of competition, that's the main thing is the level playing field. So yeah. did you by chance happen to catch any, I don't know how much you stay plugged into the big, the big overall scene, but did you happen to catch that interview Chad Hoover did that had AJ and uh, Steve with bass on there? Yeah, I did. Um, what are your thoughts on it? what did you take away from it? You know, I listened to another um, podcast. I don't know if they were on KBN together. Um, maybe a month or so ago, but they had a few different tournament directors. It was more of the local scene. I think uh, Josh Booth was on there and, and some other guys. Yeah, for but, the All-American, yeah. Yeah, it, and they were kind of talking like not not just rules because the whole Drew Gregory thing had just happened uh, yep. where they had – and he he got it overturned and, and, uh, and kept his championship. But I think that – there was some ambiguity in the rules that they needed to lock up. I think that's yep. good. Um, but I, and I think it's fine. You know, if Hobie wants to be, um, um, you know, a, a pedal only um, or pedal or paddle, that's, that's fine. That's the, that's the prerogative and that's the direction of that, that they go. And, and it's Hobie, right? So yep. that makes sense. But um, I think all the other ones are, are kind of shifting out that way and what i did find interesting is i think the boat launch thing and the um the like no wade fishing anymore um i think i think that makes sense um yeah i like that they did leave the caveat in there you know you go to like the susky or you know a place where it's like six inches of water surely you're going to get out and just keep your kayak tethered to you that's that's its own separate beast of yep. a of a tournament there yeah right but yeah i i think it's good that they're getting on the same page um because the last thing you want to see is and it's up to you know these guys are are competing at the pro level on these things and it's up to them to understand and um uh, you know how each of these rules are different at, at but it, but it's it'd be nice if it was just fluid you know that that everything's the same so you know, I think it's getting closer. It is. It is. And one of the, I'm going to do like, we've got two episodes coming up where we're going to talk about this very topic here. I've got uh, one planned with some local guys here and I've got another one planned with a couple pros that are coming from uh, one from the all American one from bass and, uh, and just sit down and chat because it's, it, it's worthy enough to say, and I have to preface everything that I say with make no mistake. I'm extremely proud of our industry because what you just saw there is something that the MLF and bass needed to do a long time ago and they won't, you know, there's just so much friction between those organizations yeah. and uh, that, that apparently they don't realize that, you know what, for the betterment of the entire sport, we all do need to kind of get on the same page. You can have your, your opinions about what's the best field and what's this or that. Fine. Ford and Chevy it up all day long. But when it comes to standardization, when it comes to, you know, sportsmanship and what's expected in these things, having these organizations like the KBF and um, I will, I personally will be very glad when the all American gets its, its due uh, deserves in my opinion and gets brought to that table to chat because my, you know, I'll, I'm, I, I don't want to give away too much of uh, some of that other stuff, but my view on this is you got to have diversity in your schedule. Yeah. Um, 
I was really waiting on Bass's schedule to drop because I believe they could be the leader in the kayak game. They have the most recognizable game. They have the most resources available to them out of anybody, even over K over Hobie, yeah. you know, to, to really drive this forward. And man, did I just feel like a want, want, want happened when I saw that deal, because I'm sorry, three out of five, you did five events, you know, that's it. Yeah. It yeah. just seems like they're dipping their toes in the water and they're still not ready to dive in. And then three out of those five are East coast. Yeah. Like, Come on, dude. <laughs> and it's, it's places that we've been, everybody's gone before. Like you said, kayak side, we can, we can exploit waters, man, and show you some really good fisheries out there from a kayak. So. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think uh, a little grace to, to bass on that is that I, I, I'm trying to remember what podcast it was on. It might have been uh, KBN or, uh, or maybe even like Be the Fish. But uh, Steve was talking uh, about yeah a few weeks ago or whatever. It was it was previous to this one with with Chad. Yep. And and AJ. But I think the problem with the schedule, the reason it's so limited, is that Bass was really excited to bring him on, and that but that came so late in the season. If they would have brought him on you know, last spring or even early summer, you know, it's a lot to book. Like even us it, oh. in Colorado, we're trying to book these places out for yeah. the year and you're scheduling around bass tournaments, kayak tournaments, uh, just other events that are out there Yep. to, to get, Hey, it's, uh, you know, October, November, um, welcome to the team. And, by the way, go schedule the next season. <laughs> right. you know, I, I, yep, I, yep, think, yep. I think it, there's going to be some, you know, some, some growing pains there, but I'm really excited to see, like, like you said, I, I think they've got the most potential. They have the stage that, yeah. uh, that people want to be on. Yep. So it, it's going to be exciting, but the fact that they're all working together is great. And I think yep. that they'll have probably a bigger schedule the following year. And I was, I'll be honest with you. I was blown away that AJ was even there. Now he had a look on his face that, that, <laughs> that I, I don't know what it meant, but there was clearly something going on inside his head when he's watching. But here's the thing. Let's just call a spade a spade because I, I did the numbers on this. The best, it's not scientific, but it's based on the results of what I could pull from stuff on the internet. When your average number of entries more than doubles your next closest competitor, why do you care what they're doing? Clearly you're the one doing it. And yeah. the, what I always say is, is that, you know, I look at the Hobie boss and yes, it is the most money up for grabs. It has the best sponsorship. It has some of the best marketing, you know, that's out there right now. They've gone all in on it. So I'm not, and I'm very thankful that they're providing this Avenue for so many anglers to do what they do, but I still view it because I'm not a, I'm not a Hobie guy. That is the Hobie Owners Tournament Series. That's what that is. They go to lakes specifically that are built for those craft, that that craft can shine, and that's why they do it. You know, it's the, it's, 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 you know, and so I get that and that's cool. I, I but I'm thinking of the sport in general, you know, and that's why I say yeah. bass has that potential. And you're right, man. I mean, they're, they went through a lot of change that's trying to put it around there. I just, uh, you know, our, our numbers at the all American is, is, you know, we're one of the, we're obviously the smallest out of all of them with what the average number of entries that we have. But the thing I love is about where we go. We yeah. are an equal and and that's those two things do kind of really, they have a symbiotic relationship where you fish and how many people you get. And I think that's what also what pushed bass to East coast. Cause they get more people in there, you know, that East and Southeast yeah. area, there's just more fishermen in that area than there are out here. You know, not everybody's yeah. willing to travel 12 hours to get to a body of water. So, yeah. And, and I kind of wonder if, you know, you hear the, the top, you know, 10 and, you know, kayak fishing has gotten so big. You, you, you hear people, you know, the, the minor brothers, or Steve Fisher, uh, Drew Gregory, you hear these names and it's like, you know, these are like our, Kevin Van Dam's now, or yep. you know, or G Man's, you know, it, it's turning into that. Um, and I wonder if some of these people start really fishing all American because the payoffs there, <laughs> you know, that yeah, they've got they've got a good purse. So I, I think they're I think they're up there. Um, 
what drives the purse is the number of entries. You know what I mean? We our percentages at the All American are as high, if not higher, than some of the others because our overhead's real low. Yeah. And Joshua Booth runs. He and Tyler Cole they they run a phenomenal series out there. I mean, we're that's our primary series we fished All American and and competing for that AOI. That is our you know that was our first goal with our schedule. Our second goal for you know local representation, uh, you know, came with the CKB. And then I am getting in a bass event out there, you know, where I wanted to do a lot more of theirs, but I would have to give up local. I'd have to give up all American to try to make that schedule work out there, you know, to travel around like that. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah, well, uh, all American is like I said, and there's, man, there are some hooks in that series too. It's cool seeing a lot of the local guys here though, want to make that stretch and that run. I mean, the Colorado representation, man, at the open air, I'm sorry, at the classic, that's going to be some fun. I mean, you're going to the All American Classic, right? Yeah, we've got just from our club, and I know CKB's got a bunch going as well. Because we got we also yeah. we've got we get the multi uh, uh, as well as the bass for rankings to, to qualify. So yeah, we're gonna have a, a really good turnout for Colorado, and there's some sticks going. Yeah. Um, so yeah. We got to, we got to try to facilitate getting, you know, getting, you know, the Colorado connection together. I know we're not all going to be staying, you know, in the same locations and such, and that's a big body of water there, but yeah, yeah we got to try to find maybe something in Clinton or something somewhere, one of those practice nights to get the, you know, get it for some, for some pizza and a beer or two and just, uh, sure. you know, make, make Colorado proud while we're there. You know, it's, uh, both clubs, like I said, there's a, it's a, it's a friendly relationship. So as long as we can bring that title home to Colorado, that's all I care, man. Absolutely. That's, make sure yeah. that happens well, listen brother i'm gonna let you go here we can't thank you enough for stopping by and chatting fishing with us and, and talking stuff about the club um folks make sure to get out there to the colorado kayak fishing club if you're interested in kayak fishing in general in the state of colorado and you are looking for friendly people with tons of information that's the place you need to go check them out on facebook um if you're interested in doing some tournaments uh ab absolutely get there too and again you, you be a sign up to be a member regardless whether you're going to do tournaments or not because you know just understand your membership gets you access into thing gets you special discounts out there and above all the Colorado Kayak Fishing Club gives back to local nonprofits here in the state, and they take portions of that membership and so forth. And so we are, we are uh, very, very pleased to uh, to uh, to be associated with them when it comes to that. And uh, as you have, know, the Romans Warrior Foundation is the 2023 benefactor of uh, that that uh, that deal there. So it sounds self serving, but I'd say I was saying it last year when we were not, when it was the Boys and Girls Club, because I think that is an awesome deal, man. Yeah bring our passions together and help the community. Why not? So, well, we will have to have you back on here, dude. And, uh, and yeah, maybe we do a, a classic, uh, prelim here and I will, we'll get some anglers all together and we'll have a big round table here on the podcast and we'll talk about the classic and, you know, share information that, uh, uh, that, you know, what we think is coming up, what we think we're going to see when we get there. Hopefully the, the spring plays nice with us. When I was there last year towards the spring, we got some hell of big rain when I was there. Uh, yeah, that was uh, just, I was very thankful how great my unlimited drains. It drains so <laughs> nicely out there. And I'm like, all right, we're okay. We're going to, we're going to keep on trucking through this, but yeah. there's a lot of fish out there though. I will say that. Nice. All right, man. Well, folks, thanks a lot for tuning in. Be sure and hit that subscribe button. Follow us at True Patriot Outfitters at YouTube. As always, folks, tight lines. Be safe.